Since the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan began, hundreds of injured soldiers have been treated at Headley Court, many of whom have returned to active service. But that's not an option for everyone. While recovering, Peter met another Welsh soldier who'd been injured in Iraq and whose future army career was in jeopardy. Samantha Bowen from Mountain Ash is 21 years old. Like Peter, she's struggling with physical injuries, but she's also dealing with the mental scars of her time in Iraq. So how old would you have been in, the, in this fight? Um, I would have been nearly 16, I think. So not long before you went into the army then? No, no, not at all. Um, I think this was my actual last fight before I went to join the army. When you first got out to Iraq, was it what you expected? No, not at all. We had a lot of facilities like gyms and things like that. You know, the food was pleasant. Um, basically, I just thought, you know, is this really Iraq? The heat was tremendous. When you get hot and sweaty, then your morale goes kind of downhill when the motors are coming in and, you know, after you, the novelty kind of wears off. So after a while, did it sort of get a bit boring out there in a way? Yeah. I was glad t to get home, but not uh, so glad getting flown back, back the way I actually got flown back. Three months into her tour, Samantha's camp at Alamara in southern Iraq was attacked in the middle of the night. Well, basically, the, the motor actually came kind of diagonal into the accommodation, and my bed was literally there. Mortars can travel hundreds of metres before they land and explode. Around 50 hit the camp that night. The effects of the shrapnel were devastating. I think it was on, about on the third mortar. I got blown back towards my bunk. And then on the next mortar straight after, it went through my leg. What did you think at that moment when you knew you'd been hit? Um, to be honest, I was quite scared. But then the adrenaline kicked in and things like that. But I did actually hit a very big artery in my legs, so I was bleeding pretty fast and pretty dangerously. Did you think this could be it? I did, yeah. I really did. When the attack happened, Samantha's boyfriend, Carl, also a soldier, was just a few hundred metres away. But because they weren't married, he wasn't allowed to see Samantha. I just wish I could have, you know, someone could have just picked me up and carried me out rather than me being there, I just wanted to be back in the UK with a blink of an eye, basically. But I, I was always on my mind as well if Carl was safe or not, because he was, like, literally a few cabins away from me. Samantha had emergency surgery in Iraq and was then flown to Selly Oak Hospital in Birmingham. Her mum rushed to her bedside. So I went in and just, you know, I was just crying then. Um, I mean, I... Couldn't see none of her injuries because she was all like covered up and all. I just wanted to look what they'd done to her, like you know, you know that's your little girl being hurt. Like you know, when you look after you, you have your children, you you look after them to the best of your ability, and then something like that happens and destroy them. Like you remember the whole incident quite clearly, then. I do, yeah. Do you think that makes it easier to to cope with or harder the fact that you much much harder. It's because, you know, you um, you just kind of, with me, I suffer from nightmares, so I kind of, I can smell the smells of the night. You know, I can, the nightmare is so realistic. You know, it, it really scares me. And, I mean, I, ca I can't get through the night, you know, after a nightmare. No matter how much I try, I can't get back to sleep, so... You know, it, I, I just only wish I could forget everything about Iraq or maybe better still everything about the army and I just wish I never joined now. You feel that strongly about, about joining the army? Yeah, because, I mean, I'm 21 and my life is basically ruined. Uh, do you blame the army for...? I do, because um, the accommodation that we actually had in Iraq 
it wasn't actually covered by sandbags or anything like that. So if it was actually better protected then, maybe I wouldn't have got so hurt in the beginning. The Ministry of Defence told us it takes the safety of its troops seriously and the temporary camp at Alamara was given the best protection available at the time. Like Peter Heyer, Samantha spent several months of intensive rehabilitation at Headley Court, but her injuries weren't simple to treat. The shrapnel has actually pierced my thigh, so it's damaged all the main arteries and the nerves going down my leg, um, has left me, left me with paralysis from the knee below on my right leg. Um, the feeling and the control is very poor, so walking is very difficult for me. Is it? And then you have to be careful with that. I've been through um, about 11 operations as it is now, and I sh I'll have a lot more to come to try and build everything back up. Feel that stretching? Yeah. Tight. Physiotherapy sessions are a regular part of Samantha's life now, something I remember all too well. Sam, how's the physio gone this morning? Um, not too bad. Um, I'm all within pain, so a few hours after physio, I get more pain, but then it kind of relaxes a bit then because of the physio. Do you think it's helping you? Yeah, definitely. I've come quite a long way with physio. But you've still got more operations to come, so presumably there's still a lot more physio to be done. Yeah, I'll probably be having physio until I'm old and grey. <laughs> but despite the hospital appointments and operations, there have been some happier moments for Samantha and her boyfriend, Carl, who's now left the army. Four months after we got back from Iraq, we were going on a long weekend to Newcastle. I was in my wheelchair, he was sat on a bench, and he kind of proposed, got down on one knee and proposed. Mixed feelings were going through my head. Oh, does he feel sorry for me because I'm in a wheelchair? Because I was different to when he first met me, I, you know, I didn't really know how to take him. Do you feel like you are a different person now? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm never, never as giggly or as happy as I used to be, you know. Um, low self-esteem and confidence is very low. And Samantha finds these feelings hard to hide from her family. She shares a bedroom with her four-year-old niece, Casey, which comes with its own problems. At the beginning, she just didn't realise what... You know, she knew I had a bad leg, but she, did, she didn't realise that I have the nightmares and things like that. She kind of got used to it, but, you know, she'd tap my face to get me kind of out of my nightmare. How have you explained to her what you Well, it was on the news, actually, and, um, and she'd always say, oh, Auntie Manfa's been there, you know, every time she sees Iraq or maybe Afghanistan, she doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. But every time she sees a soldier, she's like, it's, you know, oh, it's like you kind of thing, you know. She doesn't realise that I'm out of the army. Samantha has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, but says she didn't receive the help she needed from the army. Physically, they've done quite a lot for me, and I'm grateful for it. But mentally, I think they've done nothing. I mean, I've, they have had... Uh, they have given me counselling sessions, but it's not trauma-focused trauma, um, kind of thing. 